Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also become one of our Patreon supporters at patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I want to welcome Tony as our latest Patreon supporter at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Tony. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of The Adventures of the Falcon. The original air date, November the 5th, 1950, and the title is The Case of the Rich Racketeer. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, June. I was just thinking about you, Angela. The theater tonight? No, I'm sorry, I'm working on a case. Of course, I know those tickets were hard to get, but so was the murderer. And I've got a date with one in exactly half an hour. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves. The Case of the Rich Racketeer. Before we join the Falcon in his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you folks about Kraft's golden cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta is such good eating. Just taste that grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta is so good for you. It's rich in important food values from milk itself. For swell-tasting snacks, for good, hearty sandwiches, for thrifty, easy, hot dishes, it's smart to keep stocked with Velveeta. Get it tomorrow in the handy quarter-pound package or in the economical two-pound loaf. The cheese food of top quality. Velveeta is made only by Kraft. And now, the case of the rich racketeer. It's Sunday afternoon in New York City. A cab pulls up in front of a large Central Park West apartment building and two men get out. One of the men is big, beefy, and florid, while the other is slim and quick-moving. The two men hurriedly enter the building and ride the elevator up to the 10th floor, where florid face leads the way to one of the apartments and opens the door. Flo? Hey, Flo? Guess my wife's not home yet. Come on, Colin. Come on in. Let's get the door. Excellent idea, Sullivan. Excellent. Wait there and leave your hat and coat on. Won't take me but a second to write a check. Check? Yeah, check. I think I'd rather have cash, Sullivan. I was much too good in court this afternoon to warrant a check. Okay, so you were good. You were swell. You were better than usual. And you're still the best business finagler in New York. But you're going to get a check. Finagler is a nasty word. Almost as nasty as racketeer. Yeah, but racketeer is better, Garland. You see, in my business, you don't have to pretend to be something you're not. But you do have to be smart. Yeah, that's right. You have to be smart. Now then, here's your check. Take it and blow. I got a date in a little while. Only a thousand dollars? You're lucky to get that much. Hey, hey, don't tear that up. Why, you cheap chiseling punk. I saved your fat neck this afternoon. An income tax evasion charge is the only way they catch guys like you. And I cleared you. I got you off scot-free because there wasn't any evidence of the money you made. They could have ruined you. Yeah, but they didn't. No, they didn't. And I'll tell you why they didn't. 
Because I advised you not to keep any records or books. I told you to keep your profits on hand in cash and not to keep it in any banks. So what? So I want my share in now and I want it in cash. I know you've got more than 300 grand solid away. You're crazy, Carlin. Oh, no, I'm not. I know you've got that money, Sullivan, and I want my share. I want it right now and fast. I want $30,000 and I want it in cash. Oh, why, you stupid little... <clears throat> Say, hey, that, that's the way you want to play it, huh? That's the way, Sullivan. I'm not bluffing. It's loaded and I'm not afraid to use it. So if you want to enjoy your freedom, hand over the 30 grand. Now look, Garland, be reasonable. Put that gun away. Not a chance. But you're wrong. I swear you are. I'm broke. That $1,000 check I just wrote will practically wipe me out. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? It's true. Now listen, I know you deserve a bigger fee, but I can't give it to you now. Later I'll no, try No, quit and... stalling, Sullivan. Where's the money? I know you got it. I dumped it in an oil deal out west. I thought I could really clean up, but something went wrong. <laughs> you never took a chance in your life, and an oil well is a gamble. You're a sure thing player. Come on, Sullivan. Getting tired of holding this gun. Where's my $30,000? I tell you, Garland, Get it quick, I wanna... Sullivan, or I'm going to pull this trigger. What the... Larry, what in the world? Look out, Flo. This gun might... No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh. Oh. That's better. I'll just keep this gun as a souvenir. Now get out of here before I break it over your head. What's going on here, anyway? Shut up. Okay, Garland, get going. You made a mistake, Mr. Sullivan. A big mistake. I want that 30 grand, and I intend to get it. That little bum might have killed me with his gun if you hadn't opened the door and banged into him. That's too bad. If I'd known, I'd have waited outside in the hall. What? You heard me. What's eating you? You are. Come on, come on. Spill it. What's on your mind? A blue-eyed, baby-faced little blonde named Bonnie Shaw. Bonnie? What are you talking about? Get wise to yourself, Larry. Did you really think you were kidding me? Don't you think I know where you've been spending your evenings? Now, wait a minute, Flo. You don't know what Take you're talking... Take your hands off me, you big ape. I've been a sap for a long time, but now you're going to pay and pay plenty. How did you find out about Bonnie and me? A little bird told me. I said, how did you find out? And I said a little... You're going to be sorry for that, Larry. Very sorry. Yeah? But not as sorry as you're going to be. Your little bird didn't tell you quite enough. Sure, I've got a girl named Bonnie Shaw, and I'm nuts about her. I'm going to divorce you and marry Bonnie just as soon as possible. Really? And I got more news for you, too, baby. Just in case you think you're going to hook me. I'm broke. I've been wiped out completely. You can't get a dime out of me. That's too bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shame. I feel so bad about it, I'm apt to bust out crying if I hang around here any longer. So get away from that door and let me out. Sure, Larry, I'll let you go. But not with Bonnie Shaw. Try and stop me. Wait, Larry. You're forgetting something, aren't you? Now look, Flo. Put that gun down. Why, Larry, I only wanted to hand it to you. It belongs to your lawyer friend. Don't you want to give it back to him? Why, why, yes. Maybe I'd better. No. On second thought, I don't think he needs it as badly as I do. You? Yes, darling. I've just thought of a wonderful use for it. Well, what are you going to do? Why, can't you guess, Larry? I'm the forgotten middle-aged wife who's been dropped without a cent. I'm going in the bedroom and blow my brains out. Oh, oh, oh don't kid me, baby. You never do that. You're so right, darling. I'd never, never do that. Sorry I'm late, Bonnie, but... Nice little hideaway you got here, Sullivan. Miles from the city. Woods all around. Lake out front. You couldn't have picked a sweeter love nest. Who are you? My name's Shaw. I'm Tom Shaw. Shaw? Yeah, I got a sister named Bonnie. Mean anything to you? You're Bonnie's brother? That's right. Where is she? She'll probably be along in a few minutes. Say, I don't get this. Bonnie didn't tell me you'd be here. She didn't know it. And what are you doing here? I'm telling you to stay away from Bonnie. 
Maybe she'll have something to say about that. Bonnie's just a kid. She doesn't know what she's doing. Now, look, Joe. You got the wrong idea. I'm crazy about Bonnie. We're in love, and we're going to get married. No, you're wrong, Sullivan. And even if you meant it, I'd die before I'd let her throw herself away on a grafting racket here like you. Guy who's old enough to be a father who's already married. You told my wife about Bonnie. Sure, I told her. Why, you little... My jaw. Next time, it won't be your jaw. It'll be your neck. Now get out of here and stay out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get out, Sullivan. But I'm coming back with a gun. I want to call New York City. What number, please? You'll have to look it up. I want to make a person-to-person call to Mike Waring, the private detective who's known as the Falcon. You know, Angel, you got the bluest eyes. <laughs> yeah, they go so well with... Oh, Hand me the phone, will you, Angel? Don't answer it, Mike. Let it ring. I got to hand it to you. Oh, all right. Hello? <laughs> like that. Uh, yes? Is this Mike Waring, the Falcon? Yes, it's the Falcon speaking. Must be something wrong with this connection. For a second, I thought... Well, never mind what you thought. Just tell me what you want. I want to hire you. Right now? Yes. Why? Are you working on something else? Uh, yes, I am. Well, then drop it. This job's important to me, and I'm willing to pay plenty if you'll come out here right away. Where are you? In my cottage at Tallow Lake. Well, it's 10.30 now. I couldn't get there much before midnight. I know that. All right, what's the job? I'm working on a very important deal at the moment, and it's absolutely necessary to keep my movement secret. I'm pretty sure that somebody's been following me this evening. I want you to find out who it is. You say money is no object, Sullivan? None at all. Okay, keep talking then. Just exactly where is this cottage of yours? Hello? Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Who's this? The same guy who called you this morning. You mean about my husband? That's right. Who are you, anyway? Never mind who I am. I just found out where your husband is meeting Bonnie Shaw. Where? In the last cottage down the road on Tallow Lake. He's there now waiting for him. If you're interested in keeping him, you better go out and bring him home right away. And if I'm not interested? Well, in that case, you might drop him a farewell note. Because I have a hunch he's going on a long, long trip. It's lighter-bodied. It's super fined. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressings. Yes, there is something new under the sun at your grocer's right now. A new salad oil, Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Wait till you try it in those wonderful salad dressings you make yourself. Those light-as-air chiffon cakes you're so proud of in all your special recipes that call for liquid shortening. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil. Super fine for better blending by a special new Kraft process. Because it's lighter-bodied, it mixes perfectly with all ingredients, puts new magic into dressings, cooking, and baking. Don't wait. Put this new salad oil on your shopping list right now. Remember... It's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's an hour and a half later. Mike Waring has just stopped his car outside Larry Sullivan's secluded cottage at Tallow Lake. The light is on in the living room, but the house and countryside are strangely quiet. Mike walks up to the front door and knocks. There's no answer. No 
No sound from inside. He opens the door. And stops suddenly. Across the room with her back pressed tensely against the closed bedroom door stands a beautiful, young, very frightened blonde. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. When I knocked and nobody answered, I'm I... not scared. <laughs> you better try again, Angel. It's not that cold in here. I don't understand. You're trembling. Why? I don't know. Okay, have it your way. Where's Sullivan? Larry? I don't know his first name. He called himself Sullivan. He hired me to come out here. Why? Said he needed a detective. You're a policeman? No, I'm a private detective. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Where's Sullivan? He, he's not here. He's gone. He won't be back. Please, you'd better go now. Now, wait a minute, Angel. Not so fast. What's behind that closed door? It's, it's just the bedroom. Who's in there? Nobody. Nobody at all. Please. Now, don't try to kid me, Angel. If Sullivan's changed his mind about needing a detective, he's not going to brush me without getting out his checkbook. No. No, please don't open it. Oh. <laughs> No wonder you got the shakes. What gives me the jitters? Is <laughs> Sullivan? Yes. With a bullet hole in the back of his head. Larry. <laughs> okay, you can cut out the act. I'm not impressed. I... Yes, where's the gun? The gun? The gun you killed him with. It's not here. Where is it? You think I killed Larry? You just try to get rid of me. You're scared, silly, and you knew he was in there. No. No, you're wrong. I didn't shoot Larry. I just got here a few minutes ago. I found him in there. I was frightened. I didn't know what to do. Why were you tailing him tonight? I don't understand. He told me on the phone that somebody was following him. That's why he hired me. He wanted me to find out who it was. I wasn't following Larry. I came here to meet him tonight. I, I loved him. We were going to be married just as soon as his wife divorced him. You already had a wife? Yes. She killed him. She must have found out about us and come here yeah, tonight. That's possible. Get... She might have been the person who was following him. Of course, it must have been his wife, don't you see? Well, not yet, but a little outside help might clear it up. Where's the phone? What are you going to do? Call the police. No. No, wait. I, I mean, you've got to understand about us, about Larry and me. Yeah, sure, sure, I know. You can tell me all about it after I put in this call. No, please don't call him now, until... look, Angel, you can't pump bullets at a ball spot without letting the police in on the fun. Somehow, I don't think they'd like it at all. Bonnie Shaw, hmm? Yes, Mr. Waring. I've told you the truth. Larry and I loved each, loved each other. I had no reason to kill him. Sullivan told me he was working on some sort of big deal. You know anything about it? No, he never told me about his business. What about Sullivan's wife? Did you know... Th What's the matter? Just heard somebody out on the porch. Keep talking, Angel. I'm sure she must have found out about us. I... What is... You're looking for somebody? Oh, what are you doing here? You know this fellow? Oh, yeah, of course I know him. He's my brother. Bonnie, you've got to listen to reason. Come home with me. You can't throw yourself away on a no-good racketeer like Sullivan. Tom, you heard what happened to your jaw. I came here earlier tonight to talk to Sullivan, but he couldn't see things my way. We had a fight and he hit me. Is that why you shot him? Why, wait a minute, what's going on here? Who are you? A lot of people call me the Falcon. The Falcon? Bonnie, what's happened? Where's Sullivan? He's lying in there on the bedroom floor with a bullet hole in the back of his head. He's dead? Definitely. Let go on me. What's the idea? I just wanted to see if you had a gun. What, are you satisfied? No, you could have thrown it away out there in the woods. You think I killed Sullivan? You said you had a fight with him tonight. Yes, we had a fight, but I didn't kill him. I was plenty sore when he threw me out, but I cooled off after I called his wife. You called Sullivan's wife tonight? Yes. Why, you contemptible little... All right, little... take it easy, Angel. I did it for your own good, Bonnie. And Sullivan's wife did know about him and Bonnie. Of course she knew. Him. Wait a minute, maybe she did Of course it. she did it. Why did you come back here, Shaw? Well, after I called Sullivan's wife, I got to thinking. I, I thought that if she came out here, maybe the two of us could break this up. Oh, sure. The police are going to love that story. Did you call the cops? Yes, of course. They'll be here any minute I'm now. getting out. They're not going to find me not here. So fast. Get out of my oh, way! <laughs> Knocked him out. Yes, well, he'll get over it. And it might jar him into telling the truth when the police wake him up for a chat. Then my husband took the gun away from Mr. Garvin and told him to get out. Did you tell the police about that? Well, certainly I told them. 
But they seem to think that Tom Shaw was the killer. Of course, they said they'd question Mr. Garland this morning. Mm -hmm. Did you leave this apartment last night after your husband went out? Why, no. Could you prove that? I don't think so. Why? What are you driving at, Mr. Waring? Your husband was running around with another woman, and you had just found it out. Do you think I killed Larry? Your motive was even better than the others. Oh, that's ridiculous. I, I couldn't kill anybody. Well, you seem to be taking your husband's death pretty calmly. No tear-stained handkerchiefs or swollen eyes. Why should I pretend? He meant nothing to me anymore. I didn't even mind the fact that he had this girl, Bonnie Shaw. You weren't jealous? Certainly not. I knew he was going to leave me, but I didn't care at all. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Waring. If I could have gotten money from Larry, I might have tried to hang on to him. Or at least make him pay plenty to get rid of me. But he was wiped out. He didn't have a dime. Your husband was broke? Yes. He told me so last night, just before he went out. So you see, he was of no more use to me. I actually was glad he was going to leave me, but I certainly had no reason to kill him. I see. Oh, excuse me. Yes, of course. Mr. Gold. Oh, forgive me for calling so early in the morning, Mrs. Sullivan. I wanted to see Larry before he went out. I'm sorry about that trouble we had last night, and I want to apologize. You, you don't know about... Uh, is this the business manager you were telling me about? Yes, this is Mr. Garland. Well, what's wrong, Mrs. Sullivan? Where's Larry? He was murdered last night. Larry's dead? Yes. Why? Well, that's terrible. I had no idea. Did you read the morning papers? No, no. You see, I was upset about that quarrel last night, and I wanted to hurry over here as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. That quarrel last night gives you a pretty swell motive, yeah. darling. I, I didn't even know about the murder. Yeah, well, you could be lying about that. No, I'm not lying. But you did threaten him. Well, I was only bluffing. He owed me money, and I wanted it. I swear I didn't shoot Larry. I couldn't have done it. They took my gun away from me. It's still here. There are other guns. Well, I tell you, I didn't do it. Tell me about this money you say Sullivan owed you. Well, I, I did some financial work for him, and I felt he owed me a much larger fee than he was willing to pay. Naturally, that made me angry, and I guess I lost my head. I had the gun in my pocket. Why? And I... Well, I always carry it. I have a license for it. There are certain people who have threatened me from time to time. Okay, so I... okay. So you pulled the gun on Sullivan. Yes, yes. I, I, I thought I might frighten him into paying me what I wanted. It did frighten him, and he told me the truth. The truth? Yes, he was broke. He literally couldn't pay me. At first, I didn't believe him, but he finally convinced me that he was telling the truth when Mrs. Sullivan came in and unexpectedly and, and gave him the chance to grab the gun. Did uh, Bonnie Shaw know that Sullivan was broke? Well, who was she? Well, didn't you know Sullivan had a young girlfriend? No, no, I had no idea. I, I mean, I only knew him professionally. He never discussed his personal life with me. Mr. Waring, isn't it just possible that... That Bonnie Shaw killed your husband? Yes. That's why I wondered if she knew Sullivan was broke. He might have been stringing her along, telling her he was rich, and last night she may have found out the truth. <laughs> Hello, Mike. What? What are you doing in my apartment, Bunny? Mike, I've been trying to find you all morning. <laughs> you don't waste much time, do you, Angel? It was Mr. Waring last night. Oh, I... I'm sorry. It just slipped out. Uh-huh. Well, make it a habit, huh? I like the intimate touch. You look tired. Yeah, I know. Working for nothing always wears me out. I don't understand. I've been using my talents out of pure curiosity this morning. Sullivan hired me last night, but he didn't pay me any money. Then maybe you let me hire you. You? Yes, Mike. You've got to help Tom. Have they arrested him? Not yet, but they, they held him for questioning all night. He denies the murder, so they had to let him go this morning because of lack of evidence. But I want to hire you to find the real murderer. Are you sure about that? Of course. Please, Mike, please let me hire you to clear Tom. I cost money, you know. I don't have very much, but I'll, well, I'll try. That mink coat you're wearing doesn't exactly look like a ticket to the poorhouse. <sighs> don't let this coat fool you. I didn't pay for it. Larry gave it to me as a present. Sullivan gave you that coat? Yes. When? About a week ago. Why, what's wrong? Sullivan claimed he was broke. But that's ridiculous. He had lots of money. In fact, he told me he just made a tremendous killing in some sort of business deal, and that's why we... That's why you what? No, no not nothing. It... Now, now, come clean, Angel. If you want my help, you've got to tell me the truth. <sighs> All right, Mike. I'll tell you the truth. Larry wasn't broke. I know. We... You see, we weren't going to wait for his divorce. We were going to South America together. 
In fact, he already had the steamer tickets. And a stack of money in cash? Yes. You know where that money is? No, Mike, I don't. I swear I don't. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Angel? No, Mike, I wouldn't lie to you. I couldn't. You know that, darling. <laughs> well, that's a nice try, but you'll have to do better than that. All right, wrap that mink around your lovely shoulders. We're going treasure hunting. Where to? Out to Sullivan's Cottage on Tallow Lake. <laughs> Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious. With a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike set out for Tallow Lake with Bonnie Shaw. Now they've arrived. Mike, look. Yeah, it looks like a cyclone hit the place. Well, I'm not surprised. The murderer was here searching for the money. Yes, of course. And he's beaten us to it. He must have found it if Larry had it hidden here. Well, don't be too sure about that, Angel. You don't think the money was here? Oh, yes, I'm sure it was here. And I think it still is. But why? Well, look at this room. Everything is torn up, drawers are empty, pillows slashed, rugs thrown back. Nothing's been overlooked. I don't understand. Well, it's simple, Angel. If the place was only partly torn up, it might mean the killer had found the money. But everything in here has been gone over carefully, and more than once. That means he hasn't found it yet. Then Mikey may still be here. Maybe we interrupted him. Yes, maybe, but I've got another idea I like a lot better. What? The murderer knew about the money, but didn't get a chance to search for it last night after killing Sullivan. So this morning early, the killer came back out here, went over the cottage, but couldn't find the money. So the murderer got the bright idea of hiring me, a detective, to help find the missing cash. Mike, you don't think that well, I... After all, Angel, you knew about the money and the others didn't. Oh, Mike, the others could have known. Even Tom could have known about it. Yeah, sure, but I don't... <gasps> oh, down on the floor, quick! What happened? Well, yes, I owe you an apology, Angel. We did interrupt the murderer and he just tried to kill me. And he's out there in the woods. He may try to come now, up hold here... Hold it. What is it? Listen. Car... Yeah, he must have hidden it in the woods. He missed once and decided not to try again, so... It... <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> look over there on the floor. The wall mirror. The bullet smashed it. Yes, and look what was hidden behind the glass. An envelope. Uh-huh. An envelope. And full of thousand-dollar bills. Larry's money. <laughs> oh, brother, that's irony for you. The murderer couldn't find it, but his bullet did. He's not a very good shot. <laughs> Wait a minute. Shot. What? Thanks, Angel. You just told me something I should have known three hours ago. What do you mean? The murderer. I know who it is now. Who, Mike? Sullivan's lawyer, Arthur Garland. Uh, would you like a drink now? Not until you tell me how you knew Garland was the killer. Well, now that the police have caught up with him, I guess I can. You see, Garland made one little slip. A slip that I didn't recognize until you mentioned the word shot. Then it clicked suddenly. What? Well, you see, when I talked to Garland this morning, he claimed he didn't even know about the murder. Yes. Well, neither Mrs. Sullivan nor I told him any of the details, yet he knew Sullivan had been shot. He said, I swear I didn't shoot Larry. Well, Sullivan might have been stabbed, poisoned, or bashed over the head for all he knew. So how else would Garland have known Sullivan had been shot unless he himself had done the shooting? Mike, you're wonderful. <laughs> I'd never have thought of that. Well, you're not a detective, Angel. No. But I might like to be a detective's wife. All right, swell. I know a couple of boys in the force who'd love a wife like you. <laughs> okay, Mike, you win. <laughs> but you can't blame me for trying, can you? No, not me. I like persistent women. Oh, good. I'll have that drink now. Okay, then I promise to try again.
Do you like rich, delicious, chocolate-flavored malteds? Well, you can make a malted just like that right in your own kitchen with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Just make a tasty paste of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a big glass. Fill the glass with chilled milk, stir it once more, and there. A Kraft malted is mighty nourishing, too, because it's filled with all the food values in milk. Get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer and enjoy a Kraft malted often. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, there's being proved wrong, and then there's being proved wrong by gunfire immediately after you reach your wrong conclusion. I will say that this solution is one of the weaker ones we've heard on the Falcon. And I'm fairly certain we've had the how-did-you-know-it-was specific method of murder uh, giveaway. I just don't find that compelling with shootings, particularly when you're dealing with a racketeer. That's the typical way. It's what you'd expect. If it was a specific murder method in an unusual way, I'd buy it. Like if he'd said, I didn't beat him over the head with a gumball machine, or I didn't strangle him with a pool noodle. There you go. Knowing that's an admission. I'd even go ahead and buy it if it's an unexpected method, like poisoning or knifing. But assuming a racketeer got shot, particularly after you threatened him with a gun, doesn't really prove anything. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback. And we have an email from Susan, and Susan writes in, Hi, Adam. I've been listening to your Christmas podcast and recently moved to the great detectives of old time radio. I enjoy the show. I'm only in 2021. You read a negative comment from someone that said you should step down from being podcaster and be a producer, something like that. I've heard negative comments from other podcasts. I don't understand if you don't like the show, move on to another one. I can understand maybe giving some feedback, but some of the negative comments are just unkind. Thank you for sharing your passion, and I do love the comments at the end. Take care and make it a great day. Well, Susan, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your very kind note. And I have to admit that I was a bit surprised when I first started doing old-time radio podcasts because I would think that would be a pretty non-controversial Topic. Or at least that's what I, I thought back in 2007. But anybody who creates content about anything, whether it's cute puppies or nail polish or mental health, will get negative comments. I mean, I recently watched a YouTube video where a couple was paying tribute to their cat who had been a prominent part of their channel, and they had to spend several minutes defending themselves from cruel comments that people made about the cat, about the way they took care of the cat, and they weren't abusive or or doing anything untoward as far as we know, but people on the internet have to chime in because. So beyond that sort of person who produces negative comments for anyone anywhere, I think that there is a core audience for the podcast. When I first started old-time radio podcasting, Way back with the old time Dragnet show, I had a vision for what I wanted the podcast to be, and I had the image of all of the podcast listeners being gathered virtually around the radio together, listening to and enjoying the same program, and sharing that experience. And in some ways, I think that the idea deepen for me over the years because I think that there is a real social aspect to our entertainment. I remember being at work social occasions where the conversation went to all of the different reality programs people were watching, Modern Family. That is essentially 
so I tuned it out because I had nothing to contribute to the conversation and had no idea what they were talking about. And I'm just not the type of person who's going to watch a bunch of stuff that he doesn't care about just so that I'm not left out of the conversation. And generally, the things that I enjoy and that I will spend a lot of time watching are older programs. And I literally have no one to talk about them with or share them with. I mean, my wife is right, but... 80% of the older stuff that I watch aren't things that she'd be interested in. And I think that my vision is that we are sharing that experience of listening to the same program, talking a little bit about it. I love it when it's a conversation, when I get an email where someone responds to something I said or some aspect of the episode I didn't even bring up or think about. That's great because we're we're sitting there and having a conversation about a radio program that aired 70 years ago, even if we're in entirely different states or countries. But that's the vision. And I think when I read some of the really negative comments, other than the stuff that's, you know, just ad homonyms, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that they're not really the target audience for this show. They have an idea of what an old-time radio podcast should be and are frustrated that it's not that. And because of that, the comments are always unhelpful, unconstructive, because to make a constructive comment, you have to actually understand what the person is trying to build and be supportive of that. And so for me as a host, the only thing I can do is pretty much ignore the comment, delete the email, and wait for a better review to get posted in the podcast store. Thank you so much for the email. I really appreciate it, Susan. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Anton. Anton has been one of our Patreon supporters since December, currently supporting the podcast at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Anton. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Monday with another episode of The Adventures of the Falcon. And next Tuesday, we'll begin... A series of six weeks of programs revisiting previously uncirculated episodes of programs we played before. We'll have three series with one episode each and a third series that will have three episodes. So next Tuesday, join us for the return of Dr. Tim Detective, but join us back here tomorrow for the start of our final Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial where... When she showed up for work yesterday, the arcade was closed up, so she went around back. Do you know when Barney was killed? Doc figures around 3 a.m. Two slugs from a 38. One would have been enough. Any signs of a struggle? Yeah. Lamp over there was on the floor. That chair was turned over and this table had been upset. Pipes, medicine bottles, pillboxes scattered around. Uh Uh-huh. Heavy bolt and chain on the inside of both doors. Barney didn't have to let a visitor in unless he wanted to. That's right. Of course, he could have run into the killer outside somewhere. Sure he could. Only you don't think so. Unless Barney was in the habit of walking in his sleep. Oh? When we came in and found Barney, he was in pajamas and bathrobe. The wall bed over there had been pulled out and was mussed up. So it figures he was probably asleep when the killer tapped on his door. He got up and let him in. Yet according to Twilight... The place was off limits, even to his friends. But she wasn't around all the time and didn't know all his friends. He found some others... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.